We've been talking about legacy of faith. You know, things that I've learned through the years from Dr. Savell. we are heritage of faith. And faith is our victory that causes us to overcome in this world. And, um, and so we've been, we've been just, just going at this week in and week out and just being built up in the word. And, and so the last couple of weeks, we talked about staying, staying in faith is about staying in praise. Because remember, this is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled. Can you say that with me? 2024 is progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing your highest expectation fulfilled. But Darcel gave us a warning. He said, he said, there's three things that we need to be on guard with. One, he said, stay in faith. How many people you could say in the, in the first uh, half of this year that you've received some things or there's some things that have come about that you're, you're going to say, Pastor, I needed that word because I've had to stay in faith. I don't know about you, but I've had to stay in faith. The, one of the other words was remain focused. Have you had to stay focused, right? And then the last one was, was don't be distracted by the enemy. Distractions are happening all around us and will continue to happen around us. But what we have to do is we have to stay in faith. And we've been talking about that in the last couple of weeks. We talked about staying in praise. Now, I want to read a quote from one of Dr. Savell's books. And it's in his book called The Nature of Faith. And he talks about seven characteristics of faith. And I'm not going to go through all those right now. But this is in the chapter about faith rejoices. He says, rejoice before you see the manifestation with your natural eye. The moment you pray, start praising God. Then stay in praise and thanksgiving. The stronger you get in faith, the stronger you should get into praise and thanksgiving. Meaning as your, as your faith grows, also your praise and thanksgiving should grow. Your praise and thanksgiving should grow. If you have your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 4 and We'll get here in just a moment. Thank you, Father. Philippians chapter four. Let me find my place and then I want to share something with you. As we're preparing this morning, actually, almost a little bit before I came out here, and I've, I've, been, pre I've been preparing and studying and and things all week and getting prepared for this morning. And I heard this come up in my heart. And he goes, and this is what the, I believe the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, you can have quiet confidence, but you can't have silent faith. Let me say it again. You can have quiet confidence, but you can't have silent faith. Why? Because... The word tells us where faith is. And you've heard me say this over the weeks. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, tells us where faith is. It says faith is in your heart and it's in your mouth. Amen. So when I say, well, where, where's faith? It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. How do you get faith? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. Faith does not come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you're not hearing the word of God, then your faith has nothing. You do not have the seed on the inside of you to, for your faith to grow. You don't have, you're not watering the seed that's already there if you were not in the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not hearing the word, then you're not receiving the seed of faith. If you're not hearing the word, then you're not watering the seed of faith. And if you're not doing either one of those, then you're not going to have a harvest of faith. Faith is in our heart, in our mouth. See, Matthew 15, verse 18, I believe it says, it tells us this. It says that what proceeds out of the mouth comes from the heart. What, what proceeds out of the mouth has come from the heart. So you, if you want to ask, it's like, oh, I can't believe I said that. Well, go back and think of what you've been filling your heart with. 
Th- think about it. It's, it's what you're putting in is what's coming out. It's, in, it's impossible to fill your heart with a bunch of junk and expect fresh water to flow out of it. It's impossible to put junk into your heart, your eyes, your mind, your hearing, and, and, and all around you, putting in yourself in wrong environments and expect life to flow out of you. Because what is, proceeds out of the mouth comes from the heart. If you are filled with fear, if fear is the most dominant thing that's going on, spiritual force that's going on the inside of you, then the only thing that you'll release is negative. You'll re- release confusion. You'll re- release complaining. You'll release uh, death. You'll re- release uh, anger. You'll release all sorts of things depending on what your heart is filled with. But if you're releasing blessing, then that lets me know your heart is filled with the word of God. And James tells us, this is, I wouldn't plan to go in this direction, but James tell us, tells us that our tongue is like a rudder of a ship. You know, there's times in my life where, where all of a sudden I was like, um, how did I get here? Now, it started here. It was my thoughts. But my thir- thoughts end up turning into to decisions, and my decisions end up going this direction. But ultimately, in the whole process, I'm coming to agreement with something, and I'm speaking things. Yeah. Coming to agreement with uh, what other people have spoken over you. You'll never amount to anything. Yeah. You'll always be broke. Yeah. You're in poverty because of this. You're in poverty because of that. This happened to my parents, so therefore I'm going to be doing this. See, we, we have to come to a place where we're getting into agreement with the word of God. Amen. Let me say it again. You can have quiet confidence. That's what rest is. But you can't have silent faith. And so when we're talking about staying in faith and staying in praise, there's another aspect of praise that I want to deal with today. And let's look at this in Philippians chapter 4. Verse four, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Now, rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Rejoice in the Lord always. That means even when I shouldn't be the one rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, it's interesting to me that the Apostle Paul is writing this and he is having this letter penned and he's chained in prison. Now, I think if we were chained in one of the worst prisons, we probably wouldn't be, we probably wouldn't be writing to our followers. We'd probably just say, I'm not going to make it out of here. I'm going to die here. This is the worst thing. It's, you don't know how bad it smells in the bottom of the prison. You don't know about these stripes that are laid upon my back. No, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, meaning, meaning you have to come to a place where in, you're in the midst of difficulties that you have to be able to lift your voice and rejoice anyway. You have to, even though you're reading the doctor's report or you're having this, you have to be able to stand up and say, Lord, I choose to rejoice in you. I choose to rejoice in your promises. I choose to rejoice in the midst of my lack. I choose to rejoice in the midst of my pain. I choose to rejoice in the midst of my loss. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Verse five, let your gentleness be made known to all men. Now, this word gentleness, I'm like, really, how how am I gonna let my gentleness be known to all men? For one, the better translation of the word gentleness, if you go look it up, is forbearance. Or you could say patience. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your patience be known to all men. Or we could even say this. Let the way you live be known to all men. Can people tell that you're a person of faith? 
Now, being a person of faith doesn't mean you don't have challenges. Being a person of faith doesn't mean you, you, won't, you won't be attacked. But when you are in the midst of attacks and you're choosing to rejoice anyway, let your patience, let the, your way of life be made known to all men. Hallelujah. All men. Let, let, let everywhere I know. Oh, and they, oh, it's like, I, I knew when Vic was going through something, when Vic had a broken hip and he would come here and he, he would sit there, he, he'd come over here and I know he was, he would want to cry because of the pain was that he was in, but he chose to come anyway. So, so you have to, it, it doesn't matter. The thing is, is you have to come to a place where you make that quality decision that you know what? In the midst of my difficulties, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Let your, let your gentleness, let your forbearance or let your way of life be known to all men. Now get this, the Lord is near. The Lord is near. Right now, I could be in trouble, but you know what I have a revelation of? He never leaves me nor forsakes me. You know what? I, I might be in the most difficult situation I've ever been in, but you know the Lord is near. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. See, so often when we're going through difficulties, it seems like the Lord is probably a million miles away. But you have to come to a place where I'm going to rejoice in the Lord because I know even though I feel pain, even though I feel discouragement, I'm telling you the Lord is near. The Lord is near to you. He's near to those that cry out to him. He's near to those. If you draw near to him, what? He's going to draw near to you. So, so the issue we have to embrace and what we have to continue to reinforce in our faith walk is the fact that God is with me. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, let your way of life be known to all men that the Lord is near. Many, my situation is about to change any moment. And miracles can happen in a moment. Miracles can happen in a moment. You know what a miracle is? A miracle is when the divine intersects with the ordinary and removes every limitation. Think about that. A miracle is when the divine intersects with or the ordinary and removes every limitation. We have to come to church expecting, hey, it's going to happen today. Wake up tomorrow morning. Hey, my miracle's going to happen today. Wake up Tuesday morning. Hey, go to bed. Hey, my miracle's happening. My miracle is God is near. And therefore, because he's near, I rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. Then it says this, because it says the Lord is at hand. Actually, that word at hand, it actually means united to and allied with. So when it says the Lord is at hand, he's saying he's your ally. He, he, he's the one that's fighting for me. The Lord is at hand. He, I'm united with him. And then the next verse says, be anxious for nothing. So get this, if I'm united with him, if I'm near to him and I'm allied with him, I don't need to be anxious about anything. I don't be anxious about anything. Why? He's my ally. He's got my back. He's my benefactor. If he's my benefactor, it means he's the one that always gives me the advantage. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. And everything in the Greek means everything. Be anxious for nothing but in every, everything, in every season, in every situation, in every circumstance. That's what, that's what everything means. Every situation, every circumstance. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is my communion with God. Prayer is my submission to God. Prayer is my worship to God. Prayer is my praise to God. Prayer is the one who is the fact, it's, it's me getting hooked up with him. Another definition for prayer is to have joint interests. In everything, by prayer and supplication with. It's not just praying but it's with something. It's with thanksgiving. With 
thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. It's not just asking God for something, but there's something that's flowing out of my communion with God, and it is with thanksgiving. So my connection, what constantly flows out of my mouth is, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're into titles, the title today is, I say thank you, Lord. When, you know, there, there's times I've gone through, even in recent times where, where things would be kind of like confusing or, or how, Lord, how is this going to be? And I would just say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Not as a religious thing, but in a, my attitude that God is near. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You said in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests be known unto him. And it says what? The peace of God, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, there's something about this thanksgiving. It creates, it creates a peace. It creates a garrison. It creates a guard around my where? heart. And where is faith? In my heart. What does thanksgiving do? It's, perfect, it's protecting my heart. Let's go to Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Verse 1 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye, all ye, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now think about it. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. That sounds like rejoice to me. Doesn't it? If we were to see a, a, a definite, or what does, what does rejoicing look like? I'd say, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. It kind of sounds like what Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Then the next verse says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That sounds like the Lord is near. So I was going through this. I just saw Paul in Philippians chapter 4 in, in, in Psalms 100. Because then he says this, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. You see, see what does thanksgiving do in my prayer life? It gives me access. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. You want to get into God's presence? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. You want to enter into the presence of the one who can do impossible things? Enter his gates in thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. You say, well, Pat, you say, well, Pastor, you don't know what's going on in my business. You don't know what I'm facing right now. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Enter his gates in thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Well, Pastor, you don't know what report I heard from the doctor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. How, you don't know what's going on in my marriage. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. See, you've done it by yourself too long anyway. You need to let him take control. And how you do it is through a life of faith. And what does a life of faith look like? It's when I stay in praise. And part of that is staying in a position of thanksgiving. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We're so grateful. We're so thankful. We bless your name in this place today. Hallelujah. We're thankful. 
Hallelujah. We're thankful that you have made us and we have not made ourselves. We're thankful. Hallelujah. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his, <laughs> his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Then it says this, be thankful to him. It says again, enter his gates with thanksgiving, come into his courts with praise, and it says, be thankful to him and bless his name. And bless his name. Now, I want to give you a great picture in, in how the Hebrew gives us a picture of the word bless. Yes, it is something with our words, but actually the word bless means to, it means to adore with a surrendered knee. Adore him with a bended knee. It's, it's about submitting to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and com come into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. And what? Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Me, meaning right now, Lord, I, I've got a situation I can't handle, but I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm going to be thankful to you, and I'm going to bless your name. Hallelujah. You are, you are my provider. You're my healer. Oh, I bring my life. I bring the situation. You are the one that restores me. Oh, I bless, I'm thankful for you. You're the one that makes all things new. Hallelujah. You're the one that redeems the time. Hallelujah. You are the one, hallelujah, that, that perfect that which concerns me. You are, you are my sanctifier. You have set me apart. Hallelujah. Thank you that you have taken me out of darkness and brought me into your marvelous light. Thank you that you are my healer. You're my shepherd. Hallelujah. So as I'm thankful to him, hallelujah, I'm, I'm just surrendering to all that he is. I'm surrendering to his ability. I'm surrendering to his power. Hallelujah. 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 Thankful. Hallelujah. So when you say thank you, hallelujah, do you see him? When you say thankful, when you say thank you, Lord, I, I see, I know when I say thank you, Lord, I, it's not just a religious declaration, but I, I'm, I'm declaring everything that he is. When I say thank you, Lord, I'm saying all that he is, everything he can do. I'm declaring his ability. I'm declaring his character. I'm declaring his nature. I'm declaring his covenant. I'm declaring his promises. Hallelujah. Every time I say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When I say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When I say thank you, Lord, it's not, I, I'm, 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 I get, I get a, my, mm, I, I get some, my faith is now, so not just in L-O-R-D, but now my faith is the one that he is near and he is everything I have need of right now. Hallelujah. He's the one that's going to get me over. He's the one that's going to get me through. Thank you, Lord. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Now get this. For. See, a better, we could even translate it this way. It's just a preposition, so we can change, we could change that word for to because. So why am I gonna thank him and bless his name? Because the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm gonna thank him. Why? Because he's good. Because he's good. Because he's good. Hallelujah. Because he's good. Hallelujah. And his, his, his goodness, we, we can't compare his goodness to man's goodness. Don't try, don't try to put God in, in, in your understanding of a picture of a natural father. Because you may have had an amazing father or may have not had a good father, but either way, it, it, who God is can't compare to any natural being. Now, that father can be a great description of, uh, a, a great a part of, but I'm telling you, he's still so much better. I thank him and bless his name because he's good. Because his mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. You'll never come to the end of his love for you. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are everlasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do I thank him? Why do I come into his gates with thanksgiving? Why do I come in courts with praise? Because he's good. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Because he's good. Because mercy is everlasting. And then the next word says, because his truth endures. That's not the right definition for the word true. Go look it up in, in 26 other different translations. If you look up this word in the Hebrew, the word means steadfast and faithful. He's steadfast. Another one, he's firm. He's faithful. Why do I come into his gates with thanksgiving? Because he's good. Because his mercy, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures. Go to Colossians chapter two. Faith. Now I can have a quiet confidence, but I can't have a silent faith. Thanksgiving will be connected to a life of faith. So if I ask you the question, do you have faith in God? And you say, yes, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Because you can't have a silent faith. Well, you know, well, Pastor, I'm, 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 just, I'm just, you know, I'm just a quiet personality. We'll get, we'll get that in a minute. So those are Colossians. I'm get ahead of myself. Or should I should say get ahead of the Holy Spirit here. Colossians 2. Verse four, now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I'm absent in the flesh, yet I'm with you in the spirit. What does Paul say? Rejoicing to see your good order in the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now, he says that I wanna see, yet I, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. So Paul's writing to the church of Colossae and he says, I, I wanna see. I want to see if there's good order. Uh, I said, First Corinthians, maybe is it 13, where it talks about, Bible scholars can help me out, it talks about examine your faith. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. So examine yourself to see if in your, you're in the faith. The Amplified says, and showing the proper fruits of it. So, so it, with that, we have to understand there's going to be some, some things that I'm going to see out of my faith. I'm going to see in my faith, right? So he says, rejoice. I'm going to re rejoice and to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So it means he's going to see the steadfastness of faith. What, so what does steadfast faith look like? What does that look like? How, how am I going to be able to see if I get there? So the church of Colossae, he wants to see the good order and he wants to see the steadfastness of our faith. Next verse says, as you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. We could also say, because the Lord is near, right? This is all about being close with him. Walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and what? And established in the faith. Established in something means you can't be moved away from it. Established in something that your roots have gone down deep, and my roots... My roots, you can't move me. It might be a storm. It might be, it, it could be all sorts of things happen around me, but I'm established in faith. Amen. So Paul, this is the encouragement. Therefore, have you received Christ Jesus? Let me ask you a question. Have you received Christ Jesus, the Lord? Then it says, so walk in him. You know what? You can have received the Lord Jesus and still not be walking with him. Not every Christian is a disciple. A disciple is a follower. That's right. Do you want me to say that? And disciple and discipline are two different things. A disciple is one that surrendered. See, you can be a stubborn, disciplined one and still not be godly. Now, that doesn't mean that a disciple shouldn't have discipline. Walk in him, 
Better stick to the word here. <laughs> Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, what, as you have been taught. Yeah. See, this was the good order he's referring to. Established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it. So what's the it? Faith. How can I tell if we're abounding in faith? How can I tell if we're abounding in it? Because we're talking about being established in the faith, right? That he goes walking, it says, uh, walk in him, rooted and built up him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it. So abounding in faith, then it says what? With thanksgiving. How do I know I'm in a place where, where faith is abounding in my life? You'll be able to hear my thanksgiving. And maybe your thanksgiving will come in a form of a seed. Maybe your thanksgiving will come into a form of a dance. Maybe your thanksgiving will come in a force of serving. Maybe, maybe your thanksgiving might come from, from different, different areas, but understanding that when I'm abounding in it, established in the faith, is going to be with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving releases the supernatural. Now, thanksgiving can do amazing things in the natural. Gratitude can pave the way for you in the natural. I, I wrote this quote down, and I didn't know if I was going to share it or not, but it's by John Maxwell. It says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, and confusion into clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense out of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Thankfulness will attract people to you. It will attract bonuses to you. It will attract promotion to you. Thankfulness will put you into the right place. People don't want to be around ungrateful, unthankful people. So if, if Thanksgiving can pave a way in the natural, what can it do in the spirit? Let's look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. See, Thanksgiving releases the supernatural. It can do great things in the natural. It can cause favor. Thankful. Thankful. Are you thankful today? Thank you, Father. I'm in Romans 6. That's not going to work right now. There's some great stuff in Romans 6, but... Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at verse 8. It says, One of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, speaking of Jesus here, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Jesus was an organizer. Jesus was an administrator. It says, Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number, about 5,000, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. I think it's in Luke 9 and Matthew 14 tell the same story. And, and I love how in, in the wording in there, it says, and Jesus looking up. And Jesus looking up. And he said, I thank you. You see, his faith was connected into the provider. And he's looking up and he's saying, Father, I thank you. Can you be thankful when you have little? Amen. Most of the time we complain when we have little. Amen. Amen. But can we be thankful with little? Because when Jesus had little, through the power of thanksgiving, 
what was little now became much. Well, Pastor, one day, you know, I, I want to be able to, I want to be able to tithe $500 a week. Amen. But start with $5. What, what's your tithe now? Just, just start there. Just start there. You're like, well, I don't know if I could do 10. Start with 1%. Start somewhere. Can you be, can you be thankful? Faith, we grow from faith to faith. It's, it's a process. It's a process. Thank you, Father. And you thank him for it. Because your focus when you're thankful is not on the lack. Can you be thankful for the job you don't like right now? Can you thank him for the salary that you have that, that may not be enough right now? Can you thank him for it? Sometimes we get so busy and so self into ourselves that we forget what has God done for us in the past? Lord, even when I, I've messed up, Lord, I, you can't, thank you, Lord. I mean, I could have, I could have experienced that. I could have experienced this as a child. I could have gone through that. But, and so, so the thing is, is we have to stop magnifying the natural and what we see and let's start tapping into the faith that's down on the inside of us. And, and, and what, do you, what are you believing him for? But can you be thankful? Can, can you be thankful for the car that you have now? Can, can, and, and instead of you, you, you complaining about your spouse, can you be thankful for them first? Can we be thankful what, what God has given us? Can we be thankful? Because it's when we release the thanksgiving, then all of a sudden, what was little, what was insignificant, what was, what was broken, what was not enough, couldn't feed enough people, all of a sudden now became so much that there was 12 baskets left over. All through the power of thanksgiving. Go to John 11. Thanksgiving releases the supernatural. Well, you know, you, you, you may not like me right now, but be thankful for your pastors. Be thankful for Pastor Annette. Be thankful. You're like, I don't, I, I don't know about that church. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. I mean, when I first came to Heritage, I didn't want to come to Heritage. It's not because, I mean, I, I was serving, working for the ministry at the time. It was just I had, I had some, some connections with other people, and I didn't want to let those connections go. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit told me, he goes, Justin, for you, church isn't about your choice. It's about your calling. That's right. So when I got here, I got thankful. And it's amazing where thankfulness will take you from the sound booth to the pulpit. <laughs> from the three to five-year-olds <laughs> to having an office. Thankfulness, thankfulness, thankfulness. It unlocks amazing things. John 11. Verse 38 says, Then Jesus again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did not I say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. If you believe, you would see the glory of God. You can have a quiet confidence, but you can't have a silent faith. What, 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 what took place here? So he says that, didn't I say if you would believe, you'd see the glory? I don't know about you, but I want to see the glory. 
I, I've seen the glory of God. I've, I've felt the glory of God, but I believe we can, we, we, he's coming back for a glorious church without spot or without wrinkle. And if it's glory, us, glory means glory and us just means full of. He's coming back for a church full of glory. And he said, if you believed, didn't I say you would see the glory? See, we're about to see the glory. We're about to see the glory in this chapter because what Jesus believed, they might have doubted, but Jesus was believing. Jesus was believing to see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Verse four says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you. Just don't, don't, don't just gloss over that as just this, oh, thank you. You can say thank you to someone and still not have your faith connected to it. You can say thank, thank you and not even be grateful. You're saying thank you because it's the thing to say. But when Jesus was saying thank you, mm, Father, mm, I thank you that you have heard me. So that means there was some praying before they got to the tomb. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer, in supplication, with thanksgiving. See, the prayer already happened, but now we're about to see the with thanksgiving. Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know you hear me always. In everything, in everything, always. And I know you hear me always, but because of this people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped in a cloth and Jesus said to him, loose him and let him go. If you had just believed, you would see the glory of God. I believe when Jesus lifted up, because Jesus believed, and when he released thanksgiving, the glory of God went in and raised a dead man up. Thanksgiving releases the supernatural. Stay in faith is to stay in praise. To stay in, stay in faith is also to stay in thanksgiving. Let me close with this. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Hallelujah. Worship team, you can come up. Let me close with this thought concerning Thanksgiving. Is Thanksgiving is a choice. James tells us, let patience have her perfect work. That means you're giving permission to something. Let patience have her perfect work. Then you'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience. Let your patience be seen by all men, that the Lord is near. And he goes on, you know, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request made known to God. Mm. Look at verse, let's take a time, verse 12. Because here the writer is talking about the sacrifice and is talking about inside the camp, camp and outside the camp. Verse 12 says, Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, he suffered outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Verse 14, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Meaning I'm not looking for a city in this natural realm but I'm looking for a city that's yet to come. I'm looking for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But we seek the one to come, verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer 
the sacrifice of praise, sacrifices of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. That is the fruit of our lips. See, you can have a quiet confidence, but you can't have a silent faith. Hallelujah. So while we're waiting for this city, let us continually offer, continually offer, continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. It even tells us what the fruit of the lips are. Giving thanks to his name. It even tells us what, what should we be saying? I'm giving thanks to his name. I'm thankful for who he is. I'm thankful for all that he is, giving thanks to his name. Verse 16, but do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So what sacrifices are they talking about? It started with praise. What is the, what's the fruit of the lips? Giving thanks to his name. What is it? Doing good and sharing with one another. And it says, for in these sacrifices, God is well pleased pleased one last scripture you don't need to turn there without faith it's impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him faith is what pleases God Hebrews 13 says the sacrifice of praise giving thanks to his name this is well-pleasing to God. So a heart filled with faith will have to have thanksgiving. Let's stand to our feet.